So just to introduce myself, my name is Amari Dirava and I'm a member of the Stone and Wool Painting Committee for ICON. Um, with the Stone and Wool Painting Committee, we have organized a series of talk which is titled A Closer Look at Conservation Materials. And today we will hear our first presenter of the series, Michele Cecchin. Uh, Michele will talk about mineral, soil gel protectives and consolidants, um, especially in organic and functionalized silica for stone and wool paintings. And I will now leave the floor to um, Michele who will provide the brief introduction about the talk and then um, we can get into the details of the presentation. So Michele. Hi, I'm Marili. Thank you for your introduction. Thank you, Marili, and uh, everyone for your presence. Mm, I spent one minute uh, uh, introducing my company uh, to make you understand uh, our path and uh, our research activity. Uh, Siltea uh, was founded 10 years ago as a spin-off company of the University of uh, Padova. Uh, we are a team of conservation scientists that came from chemical science department of the University of Padova. Uh, we are developers of uh, micro and uh, nanomaterials for conservation and you are specialized in uh, inorganic type uh, surface treatment. Uh, today, uh, I will talk about uh, specific uh, uh, chemical products developed for conservation purpose. Uh, these products uh, were formulated uh, starting from a particular technology and uh, an academic research based on it. Uh, this soldier process uh, applied to cultural heritage. So... I miss one, <laughs> one slide, <laughs> okay. So let's start uh, um, explaining what uh, a soil gel process is, uh, the chemical futures uh, and the uh, real advantages uh, in the field of stone and wall painting conservation. Uh, soil gel uh, is a term that defines uh, a chemical technique that we use to obtain mineral ceramic oxides, like uh, glassy silica, uh, through, um, through liquid chemical reactions. Um, as you know, silica is the main component of um, is the main component of in uh, in glass, in quartz, and in silicate stone materials. To, uh, to obtain a pure uh, glassy silica, we have to fuse quartz at very high temperature, more than uh, 1000 uh, Celsius degree. Uh, with the patented soil gel process uh, in, this, uh, in this image, um, we can obtain a pure silica, uh, glassy silica, stable in a liquid form at room temperature without any heat treatment or dangerous catalyst. Just to explain it very uh, quickly, uh, we start from a precursor solution, the sol, uh, generally made of uh, silicon alkoxide. These chemicals have a tetraedric silicon dioxide structure inside. Through hydrolysis and condensation reaction, uh, we um, detach the unnecessary parts and link silicon and oxygen to create uh, a silica web, a silica uh, wet gel, a stable inorganic solution that we can apply on a surface to, uh, to form silica in a dense layer. Soldier products are liquid are, uh, and very easy to, to apply by brush, by uh, spray, by dipping. And when you apply it on a surface, the alcoholic solvent and the uh, reaction water evaporate and the silica uh, depos uh, deposition starts. Uh, the inorganic network uh, uh, form uh, um, a very uh, compatible layer with mineral surfaces. 
It is stable to UV radiation and uh, because it's made of silica, it is very uh, resistant to uh, acidic environment. Soldier layers uh, are uh, mesoporous, that means that uh, they have uh, a um, nanometric porosity that allows uh, gas uh, exchange with the, the environment. And finally, it's thanks to this mesoporosity, they are also reversible. So uh, they can be removed using uh, uh, alkaline substances that is uh, commonly present in uh, um, stone and plaster cleaning methods. All these features make this a suitable solution for cultural heritage. I have some problem with the presentation, sorry. Cannot understand why I miss some, uh, I miss some slides. Is okay for you if I, uh, Maintain the, the, the presentation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can, you click on the slide, yeah. and then it shows. I click, yeah. I click on the slide because uh, okay. So, the soldier process uh, is a very versatile method, and uh, uh, we can synthesize pure silica or uh, or hybrid materials or hybrid materials. Mm, for example, uh, the so-called functionalized silica, as you can see in this uh, schematic representation. Uh, for example, uh, we can uh, introduce inside the silicon uh, oxygen network uh, some functional groups, groups uh, organic groups, um, that make some functions. For example, they uh, make uh, mm, the silica hydrophobic, they increase uh, hydrophobicity. Or to improve the flexibility of the inorganic network. Or uh, to modify the porosity, to make these uh, mm, very transparent. Or to make silica adhere to uh, other surfaces like limestone materials, because we know it's very compatible with uh, with silicate uh, sur surfaces, but also with this uh, uh, adhesion promotion, we can adhere also on carbonatic on, on carbonate stones. In the conservation field, the main use that uh, uh, can be uh, can be the, the protection and the consolidation of stone materials, including uh, stone surfaces, plasters frescoes and wall paintings in general. Okay. As I said in my introduction, we started uh, more than 10 years ago uh, working on glass and ceramic materials. Then uh, from that research, uh, um, then from that research, we developed solution for porous materials, uh, testing different functional uh, groups. So our first data and application was on glassy materials. If you apply a wet gel solution on a compact substrate, uh, like artistic glass or glazed ceramic, uh, the solution forms a layer uh, that reduces the surface average roughness, as you can see from this uh, atomic, uh, uh, atomic force microscopy analysis. Thickness uh, of the of this coating can vary from a few nanometers to a few microns. Uh, reducing the roughness, uh, we reduce uh, the specific surface. Reducing it, it means that we can obtain a protective effect because we have less surface exposed to decay agents. As you can see from UV uh, v uh, visible uh, analysis, uh, uh, the silica thin films uh, is a thin, colorless, and transparent. We don't have any wa wavelength uh, absorption in the UV visible uh, field. But what 
what if uh, we apply a soil gel solution on a porous material like stone and wall painting? Well, we see uh, in uh, 2012, uh, we started experimenting with uh, functional groups to obtain a protective, protective effect also on, uh, on stone materials, on porous materials that represent the 80% of the cultural heritage uh, surfaces. What uh, we saw was that the material simply absorbed the, the, the solution. And uh, in the case of mineral surfaces, uh, like the one we see from this uh, uh, electronic uh, scanning uh, microscope, uh, um, the liquid silica coats the, the porous materials, coat the, the crystal uh, surface and the porous uh, uh, wall. So uh, I remember that the thickness is very low, uh, about uh, nanometers or some microns. So we cannot produce uh, aesthetic uh, alteration uh, like uh, organic resin did in the past. Uh, think about uh, paraloid uh, B72, for example. So we don't make any aesthetic uh, or plus, mm, plastic effect of the, of the surface. If we apply a silica functionalized with uh, organic groups that increase the uh, uh, hydrophobic uh, effect, we see with that we have a high impermeability, uh, hydrophobic effect, uh, uh, combined with uh, a, a high uh, gas exchange. So it's very, very transparent and it's a, a real advantage for, uh, uh, for cultural heritage application. The principal application, I think, is the protection of stone uh, of stone materials of, uh, of of porous materials in general in uh, in external environment mm, silica functionalized with uh, short aliphatic uh, chains can offer a high hydrophobic shield against water and dirt uh, absorption and deposition but uh, the, the, the question that uh, uh, restaurants also uh, often make to me is uh, what is the real difference between uh, a soil gel process, a soil gel product, and uh, a common uh, uh, siloxane polymer? Think about uh, uh, PDMS, the, the polydimethyl uh, siloxane, the, the, the most common protective uh, product that uh, is uh, uh, in, uh, in the market for the, the for stone protection. Uh, this polymer is uh, uh, it's it's a chain. It's a chain that together with other chains uh, form a web, and there is no adhesion with the surface. The chains simply lay on the surface. So gel silica, on the other hand, binds with the surface, like the image that you, you see, and form an organic network. Uh, functional groups uh, come outside the, the surface and give hydrophobic properties, or in case of carbonatic surfaces, they act like uh, uh, adhesion promoters. As you can see from this uh, section, cross section uh, analysis of uh, treated, uh, treated marble stone, the interaction between the silica coating and the substrate is very strong. It means that uh, uh, protective treatment uh, is very stable and durable, and it is suitable for silicate materials as well as carbonate uh, uh, surfaces. In this graphic, uh, we uh, compare um, 
we compare samples treated with siloxane and uh, samples treated with sol gel silica in a six month uh, uh, monitoring period. The true product we applied to um, the two products were applied to cement sample. We, we, there is a, the blue line is the untreated material. The red line is the uh, siloxane polymer and the yellow line is the uh, sol gel uh, protective. Okay. <clears throat> uh, monitoring uh, was performed by uh, measuring the um, by measuring the water absorption coefficient uh, at a regular uh, intervals at a regular period from the trend of the curves uh, we first see a higher efficiency of the functionalized silica the yellow line another very important advantage is the activation time as you can see from the red line, while uh, the sol gel solution in, in a few hours uh, uh, already imparts protection to the treated surfaces, siloxane uh, uh, take about two weeks to, to stabilize and to achieve a good level of, of protection. As you can see, the, the red line start go down at two weeks and reach a similar protection activity like the sol gel, uh, like the, the sol gel process. So it's very important for uh, site timing of, for your work, I, I think. Okay. Silica sol gel uh, can obviously, obviously uh, can be used also as a consolidating agent. Uh, it is an effective alternative to ethyl silicate, the other most common, uh, common product for stone consolidation. As we know from scientific literature, uh, ethyl silicate is used uh, on silicate materials such as bricks, uh, quartzites, uh, and silicious stone in general, but we can also find it on carbonate uh, matrix consolidation. What we know from the scientific literature is that in the case of marbles, the ethyl silicate deposits inside the pore, uh, the pores and uh, stabilize, uh, stabilizes uh, their movement, the movement of the grains of a carbonate stone, but uh, it does not bind. In the case of functionalized silica, on the other hand, this occurs because thanks to the functional groups that uh, act like uh, a bridge for, uh, for adhesion. And this cross-section analysis uh, of uh, consolidating marble powders is an evidence of uh, what I said before. As protective treatment, uh, as a consolidating treatment, uh, another big advantage is the reaction time. We know from literature that ethyl silicate acts in uh, uh, two or uh, four weeks uh, to reach a consolidating effect and a stable effect. With a sogel product, silica is already formed. While ethyl silicate have to, uh, have to react with the uh, atmospheric uh, uh, humidity, in the sogel process, uh, silica is already formed and it takes only 72 hours to, to stabilize. And I think it is another main advantage that means uh, uh, re reducing the work time in uh, uh, conservation work. Okay. Um, now I uh, would like to, um, to present some case history, some case studies. I want to start with uh, a job that we followed very close to working with the restoration company uh, Cores Foren from Varese. Um, the company uh, commissioned us uh, uh, to research uh, the most effective soldier solution for protecting the marble. The history of uh, Milan Cathedral uh, is, uh, is very fascinating. Um, 
since the year it was founded in, uh, in 1487, there has been uh, an elite group of people dedicated to, to its preservation, to its uh, uh, construction and preservation, the so-called Fabrica del Duomo, the maintenance uh, cycle uh, uh, last uh, 50 years to start at one point and end at the same. The cathedral uh, factory, the, the, the Fabrica del Duomo, owns the uh, Candoglia marble quarry. And to these days, if, uh, if a piece is too damaged, uh, they replace it with a new one. And that's why we had a large, a large sample on which uh, to do our testing. As you can see, the sample represents a real case of what we find on sites. The first step was the characterization of the materials, both to assess the textural characteristics of the marble, its porosity and, uh, and composition and also its, uh, its alteration. Uh, the main degradation process is due to sulfation, the formation of a black calcium sulfate crusts uh, together with surface deposition of uh, mixed nature, uh, oxide, heavy metals, uh, silicate and carbonate dust. Um, after uh, a low uh, pressure, a low pressure micro, micro sandblasting cleaning simulation with the uh, garnet, we tested two main formulation and uh, afterwards we verified the results with the uh, scanning electron microscope uh, technique to check morphological, morphological behavior of the, the product on the surfaces. We didn't want them to uh, to form accumulation or a thickness too high, okay? To demonstrate uh, the, the efficiency of the formulations, we perform the contact sponge test. Uh, it's a simple and practical system for measuring the water absorption coefficient and a method that can be used also on site as a monitoring system. If you see the results, uh, this is a comparison for, of a non-treated uh, non -treated material and the treated one, okay? We uh, also uh, tested the different methods uh, to apply the formulations. In particular, we tried a brush, a brush application and a spray deposition. Uh, then we perform a contact angle uh, test, contact angle, angle measure, to see the best results. As you can see from the images and from values, uh, the, best, uh, uh, the best results come from uh, uh, the formulation SOL SN1. Uh, it's a silica sol gel solution functionalized with short aliphatic chains uh, uh, with the 10% uh, concentration. Uh, when we apply it with the spray spray method. Then the method, uh, uh, the, the company applied to, the, to do the treatment at the end of the 2020 with uh, very good results. The next case history is uh, the consolidation and the protection of marble and grouting mortars of the Galleria Franchetti floor in uh, Cadoro Palace in Venice. The floor we are talking about uh, is uh, a measure example of uh, uh, opus sectile and uh, tessellatum uh, technique. It presents, uh, like you can see in this uh, um, representation, uh, it, represent, it presents a uh, uh, geometric decoration inspired by uh, Byzantine mosaics. The floor is not so ancient, it's quite recent. It was made at the beginning of the uh, 20th century on a project of Baron Giorgio Franchetti, at the time the owner of the palace. Despite being a recent floor, it presents a serious conservation problem 
Uh, in fact, the floor is just above the level of the uh, Grand Canal in Venice. So uh, for this reason, it is often subjected to immersion in seawater due to typical uh, Venetian uh, phenomenon, the aqua alta. All the stone materials present disgregation because of the presence, of course, of salts. And it's very difficult to find a suitable grouting mortars resisting those, con those conditions. Uh, some define it uh, uh, terminal ill. From uh, uh, 2018 to 2021, the floor was uh, a worksite school by the, the uh, in Venetian Institute of Cultural Heritage, the EVBC. It's a school. Uh, students uh, took care of the work, uh, also experimenting with innovative techniques. Uh, since our active collaboration with this restoration school, uh, it was an opportunity to to verify the potential of the social method and also to find a monitoring system to, to plan a proper maintenance. <clears throat> As a previous work, we tested a specific social solution in our laboratory. In this case, we use the uh, 65RE40. Uh, it's a 40% concentration of uh, silica functionalized with uh, methyl groups. Uh, we use it to protect marble, giving a soft wet effect, and but also to protect and consolidate grouting mortars uh, used by the students. To simulate real conditions, uh, samples were arti artificially aged with the following, following method. 40 cycle of uh, um, one hour immersion in uh, seawater and two hours drying at room temperature. After the experiment, the difference, uh, uh, the difference between treated and untreated material was very evident as you can see in these uh, pics. Scanning a lighter microscopy uh, together with uh, a EDS microprobe chemical uh, analysis helped us uh, also to verify the, uh, a good consolidating and coverage of the grouting and a lower amount after aging of uh, decay agents like uh, sodium, chlorine, and sulfur deposition. But we also tested a method to, of monitoring. Uh, we perform a contact sponge method on the marbles and grouting before and after the artificial aging to see the protection efficiency. As you can see, as you can see from the graphs on the left, the 30 cycles don't uh, affect the treatment. Graph on the right, show data of uh, 80 hours monitoring performed with a digital hygrometer on a sample after immersion to see uh, how fast the treated and untreated material dry. The blue line is the uh, untreated material, red and the yellow are samples treated with Solgel. As we, uh, as we can see, the untreated material uh, um, doesn't, doesn't, uh, doesn't dry in an 80 hour period. The water content is more or less the same at the beginning and at the end of the measure, as you can see in this, uh, in this image, okay? Um, after aging, uh, uh, we see the drying. Uh, Mm, with the drying effect uh, before aging, sorry, we see the drying effect on uh, soil gel treated the samples, and we see the that samples is uh, already dry because they doesn't absorb water. After aging, uh, we see that the uh, blue line is uh, the same because the untreated material is or, or also the same. And we see how a red and yellow line changes after uh, after after aging. 
but uh, what we, we can say is that uh, uh, the samples treated with soldier solution dry faster than the untreated material. So it's, I think it's a, a method of monitoring, not non-invasive uh, method of monitoring because we can use the curves of uh, these uh, drying curves uh, to, to, to see uh, how much, uh, how often we have to repeat the treatment. When we see that the red line and yellow line is the same of the blue one, I think it's the time to repeat the treatment. In uh, Venice condition, we see in, with uh, this uh, immersion and uh, very high presence of uh, uh, salts that, and also the, the, the presence of tourists that uh, walk on the, on the floor, uh, we see that uh, uh, it, in, we have to repeat the treatment uh, after two, two years, okay? We can go on, okay. Now I wanna talk uh, uh, about wall paintings. Uh, we collaborated with the company uh, Restoring Art SRL uh, on Villa Cairizzo in uh, Bassano del Grappa for the conservation of plasters and uh, frescoes on the facades. Villa Cairizzo is uh, a very complex building uh, with different construction phases uh, from uh, uh, 15th century to 19th century. For this reason, uh, we, we find stratification and, um, and the wall decoration with the different techniques and composition. Diagnostic uh, uh, test uh, showed uh, a very thin painting layer, um, some, uh, some parts, uh, uh, made of lime and uh, silico aluminate pigments uh, with lime residues on the surface due to the coverage of the wall painting uh, through, uh, through the centuries. So we needed to consolidate the paint layer before cleaning the surface. The work phases uh, uh, were as follow. Um, First, we consolidated uh, the paint layer and the original plaster with the, um, the Seox uh, RE10S soldier formulation. Uh, it's a formulation uh, uh, similar to the one applied to, to the Milan Cathedral. Okay. Then we use a chelating cleaner to uh, selective uh, remove ca calcium carbonate residues on the um, painting uh, on the painting layer, and after cleaning we use a more concentrated formulation, the six uh, five uh, RE twenty five that have uh, at twenty uh, twenty from twenty to twenty five percent concentration. Okay. Uh, to protect and to fix the surface uh, for uh, next retouching with, uh, as you can see, great result because uh, uh, we also obtain uh, a very clear evidence of the uh, of the frescoes and the the wall paintings details. Okay. Very uh, very briefly, uh, I want to tell you I want to tell you about uh, a pilot project in uh, Istanbul uh, that involved both uh, wall painting and uh, uh, mosaic floor. The project started as a mission organized by Asso Restauro uh, to create uh, intervention specifications. Okay. The uh, subject of the intervention uh, is the Imrar Mosque, uh, the oldest early uh, Christian basilica in uh, Istanbul. The project involved uh, the collaboration of several Italian companies, uh, both material producers like us and the restoration company. Also your father, Amarilli. <laughs> 
We were involved in uh, two specific cases. The first one uh, was the Byzantine paintings, uh, like this, uh, uh, with a cross on a light red painted plaster. The, um, this, uh, this wall painting was also covered by an Ottoman phase uh, uh, plaster. What we have seen uh, is the possibility uh, to use uh, uh, an inorganic uh, silica network instead of uh, organic resins like uh, acrylic polymer to consolidate red pigments and allow the, the following cleaning, okay? We suggest two type of formulation. We tested in uh, site two type of formulation and one functionalized with natural effect and one inorganic with a light color enhancing effect that was also appreciated. And uh, uh, we have in this case the possibility to compare uh, also with uh, acrylic resins, like, uh, like I said before, but also with other methods of consolidation of painting layer like uh, calcium carbonate nanophase. Uh, in Italy, uh, we have uh, uh, the nanorestor is a product that was developed by, <clears throat> by the University of uh, Florence. Uh, and it is made of nanoparticles of uh, calcium carbonate. So in this case, we see what was the advantages, uh, the non-chromatic alteration and the very fast dry effect, 30 minutes of uh, drying uh, of essication, and then you can act with a cleaning method on the, on the surface. <clears throat> the second case uh, is the, uh, as a portion of the marble floor of the mosque. It, it's uh, sim very similar to the one we have seen before from Venice. It presents the same geometrical uh, uh, draw. Uh, we had the opportunity to test uh, cleaning with enzymatic system and uh, to protect the surface, giving also a color enhancing effect uh, due to the formation of a silica layer that changed the refractive index. Uh, um, we know in most cases, we don't want to change the aesthetic of a cultural heritage surface, but in this case, it's very appreciated because the objective of, of the Restoration was to recreate the color of this uh, beautiful ancient and very rare, uh, rare uh, marbles. We come back uh, uh, to Italy in uh, our city, Padova. Uh, recent uh, uh, developments, including the uh, COVID uh, pandemic, uh, have led us to experiment with technique, techniques to, to protect the surface uh, and uh, limit the formation of uh, microorganisms uh, in, uh, on the surface. Among other te techniques, uh, uh, we studied uh, the addition of uh, silver nanoparticles inside the uh, silica network, inside the protective uh, coating giving uh, excellent results already obtained on very porous carbonate stones, uh, like, such as uh, uh, Vicenza stone, as you can see in the image on the left, we started uh, a monitoring plan in Prato, uh, Prato della Valle. It's the, uh, a very important uh, uh, square in Europe. Uh, I think it's the most, one of the most on the biggest. Uh, uh, square in, uh, in Europe. In 2021, uh, the stone surfaces were treated uh, with functionalized silica additivated with the stone AG. A AG. It's uh, um, 10,000 uh, parts per, per million uh, silver nanoparticles solution produced by uh, high material innovation that is a spin-off company of the University of, of Parma. 
the monitoring lasts uh, uh, one year from summer 2021 to summer 2022. Test was performed with a, a bioluminometer. Uh, it's an instrument that can uh, measure the biological contamination uh, on the surface. Results uh, of uh, one year monitoring uh, are very promising. Uh, we see an evident reduction of uh, biotic activity and this reaction is quite stable through time. The treatment uh, works very uh, well, both on vertical and uh, horizontal uh, surfaces. However, there are uh, limits uh, if uh, uh, a deposit of uh, soils uh, from uh, the on the on the treated surfaces at uh, this case uh, brought by the the trample of the the tourist uh, the nanoparticle does not work because the the treated surfaces is covered uh, from there, unfortunately, uh, we, uh, new pro proliferation of uh, uh, biological patterns can arise. Therefore, proper maintenance uh, is always necessary in some uh, places, like uh, something very visited, like uh, like Prato della Valle. The last topic uh, is about the research and development uh, in social technology for the conservation field. And uh, uh, I think it could be interesting for uh, wall paint uh, restaurants. Mm, at the moment, we are evaluating um, several pigments. Uh, uh, in the last two years, we tested soil gel solution as a binder of, uh, of mineral pigment. It can be a valid alternative to a watercolor retouching because uh, it is a total inorganic system and uh, with more uh, stability in external uh, environment. As I said before, at the moment, we are evaluating uh, several pigments with different composition. But uh, what we can say at this moment is that uh, uh, iron oxides uh, and the silico aluminate pigments are giving the best results if exposed to, to natural aging, uh, to sunlight, atmospheric pollution, and, uh, and rains. And uh, the, the, other, uh, the other, other pigments are uh, in progress, and uh, the next step is to evaluate also reversibility of this, uh, of this retouching, of course. Thank you for your attention. Uh, if you have any question, have any question, I mean, uh, your disposal. Thank you again. Thank you very much, Michele. The talk was extremely interesting, and I have some questions, but we do have two already. So um, the first question, which also links to a comment, and then a little bit more of a question that I have is about the um, reversibility of, yes. um, <clears throat> of the treatment. So um, the question is, what solution can the soul gel be removed with? Okay, all right, to explain it, let's uh, take the image of the uh, functionalized silica at the beginning, okay. No, this one, this one, okay. <laughs> As I said before, uh, silica is a uh, mesoporous materials. It means that it has uh, uh, more uh, surface to react with uh, an alkaline substance. So we can use alkaline solution uh, to, uh, to interact with silica and uh, remove only the, the silica layer. If we uh, model the the the, the uh, if we model the, the, the time of uh, exposure or time of uh, contact with the alkaline solution, we can remove, uh, for example, only the functionalized group that is on the surface, or can remove the entire uh, the entire the entire layer. Uh, as uh, I present, uh, uh, as I said in my presentation, uh, I refer to 
common methods used in, uh, in stone and uh, wall painting cleaning, like uh, uh, bicarbonate, like uh, ammonium carbonate, uh, uh, alkaline detergents that can be used in uh, common method. Um, I ask your help, Amarili, in Paco. Yeah. So, in, uh, in, in a poll, so with the qualities of ammonium carbonate or ammonium bicarbonate, yeah, which are, as Michele said, common methods that are used in the cleaning of stone surfaces and also wall paintings. Yes. Yeah. Because silica is reactive to alkaline substances. Yeah, it is resistant to acidic um, environment, acidic uh, solution, but is uh, uh, it, it is sensitive. Sensitive, sensible, sensitive <laughs> to, 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 to alkaline. Yeah, yeah. And that also links to, to something that it, um, is then not only about reversibility, but also retreatability. Of course, this is an organic material that forms a chemical bonding with the original materials and correct me if I'm wrong. And so then it leaves space for retreatability um, without feeling the porosity of the materials as other uh, organic materials instead do. Yes, yes, this is a this is a main topic also in in Italy the, the reversibility and the reapplicability of the of a product. Uh, I think uh, we can uh, do do this do the the the, the two things with the, this uh, with this. Uh, solution because uh, we can make a reversibility with this uh, so alkaline solution but also with if we see that the effect uh, is uh, not no more no more effective uh, we can uh, retreat the material without remove the the, the previously uh, without removing uh, the previously uh, application it's very easy to, to make another application because, because we, we are talking about a, a very, very low uptake of material. We talk about nanometers uh, of, uh, of materials. Yeah, so let's move on. We have um, a few more questions that are popping up. So okay. um, one question, maybe they have missed the very beginning of the presentation, but the question is whether the sole gel um, technology has been tested on ceramic substrates. Yes, we start from ceramic substrate. Uh, yes, I think uh, he missed the the, uh, the the initial part. Uh, we start from glass uh, and on ceramic uh, surfaces. Uh, we be, because the soldier process was patented for the restoration of uh, an historic uh, an historical glass here in Venice. Uh, the, 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 uh, great uh, uh, Vetrata in the Basilica of uh, Santi Giovanni Paolo in Venice. Uh, to uh, I have I have some uh, I have some also some um, image that can uh, can be used to to explain it. If you see I see my my desktop, okay. Yeah. The the main the main. Uh, mm, objective was to, to regenerate uh, the uh, glass surface with a liquid glass solution okay and mm -hmm. to, to and to consolidate the uh, grisades the, the drawing that uh, was made of uh, uh, glassy material and uh, uh, metal uh, metal dust that are fused on on glass some sometimes they are very uh, dusty and need a consolidation. So sol gel process was born for this application. Then we studied uh, the application, as I said before, for porous material that represents uh, uh, the higher amount of uh, of cultural heritage uh, surface. So yes, let's move on. So thank you, Michele. Um, so another question is whether it is possible to bind, is it possible to bind other inorganic bigger particles like marble dust or other powders? Uh, 
uh, uh, yes, it is possible to, to use it. It's a consolidant. So um, I'm searching. Uh, I'm searching some images that is more pertinent with this with this question. Uh, we can buy. <laughs> yes, as a, we use it as a consolidating uh, product, we can use to bind. Uh, in this case, we use the sandstone material to to bind and form these uh, discs. Uh, of uh, of uh, sand, uh, sand uh, granules uh, consolidated we can use it uh, for consolidation uh, on uh, on in on site but also to consolidate dust of various materials yeah. i don't know if i explain very well this yeah. <laughs> this question yeah 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 and also how easy is it to remove from a rough surface of course the um the porosity would mean that some materials may be left behind and it is not completely possible to remove altogether so yes how yes yeah. we can talk uh, in in this case we can talk about the removability of the uh, only the organic phase that is on the surface so we can um get back to the initial uh, uh wettability bagnabilità wettability of yeah. the surface because we remove only the uh the functional groups we have a silica inorganic silica that remains that adhere to the surface uh, and inside the porosity on the surface we have the chemical uh, the chemical functional groups that can be be uh, removed and also uh, if you if only we have to uh, yes to get back to to to, to the original wettability. Okay, we have lots of questions coming up, so let's continue. <laughs> sorry, sorry. So for salt contaminated surfaces and damp substrates and either low or high pH. Do you have to modify such surfaces before treatment to reduce ion concentration um, activity, for example? Uh, me la puoi ripetere in italiano? Che non ho capito. In, in se la, su la superficie è mh, bagnata, oppure ah, se ci sono, o se ha un, pie un pH alto o basso, okay, o okay. Se ci sono sali in superficie. Uh, yes, we see uh, very briefly. Uh, we see if the the uh, surface is wet, uh, there is less penetration of the of the product. Okay, so it remains more in uh, surface. Uh, there is no problem with the pH because uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, think about application of uh, uh, restoration uh, plaster. We have ancient plaster and uh, uh, new plaster. New plaster have uh, a very uh, high pH because there is an alkaline, uh, uh, have an alkaline pH due to the lime. Okay. Uh, the advantage of the soldier process is that the pH of the surface do not uh, in interfere with the soldier condensation. Mm -hmm. uh, um, it's be better to, to say that the uh, high pH can be uh, more effective because it um, uh, favorire <laughs> enhances and, uh, yes the, the the densification of the silica. So if you have new plaster, you apply a new plaster. Uh, you don't have to wait the twenty eight uh, days to carbonation carb carbonation. Carbonation, yeah, or yeah. Uh, but you can protect the new plaster after um, 24 or uh, 48 hours. Mm. And what about in presence of salts? Pre salts, uh, uh, the, 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 the case of the Venice floor was a very extreme uh, uh, case. <laughs> um, I always suggest to remove salt beforehand because uh, with this uh, treatment with consolidating uh, but also with other treatment of protection and consolidation if there are salts inside and you put something you 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 consolidate the salts they, they remain inside the, the, the material it's very dangerous certainly and um, 
follow next question. So how stable is the soil gel production, including silver nanoparticles used to prevent biofilms? Is there a risk that as the coating weathers contaminated run off onto surrounding areas could kill plants? No, it's not, not so high concentration to kill plants uh, around the, 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 the treated area. We talk about nanoparticles and very low concentration. Uh, now we are seeing it is from this monitoring that in one year uh, we have a, a stable condition, and now we are uh, continuing this uh, this monitoring uh, measure to 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 have uh, uh, to have an extension of uh, of durability. Now only we. We test in one year, and I said in one year it is stable and there is no uh, alteration at the moment. Okay. So, and also about the potential depth of so, what is the potential depth of penetration when used in consolidation of a friable carbonate stone, and will this form a threshold or a barrier? So, will it change the water absorption in the stratigraphy, and to what extent? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, the, I, I can say that the, the penetration uh, it depends uh, always for all materials from the porosity of the material we apply on it. And uh, it is the same of ethyl silicate if you apply uh, a rifuto, uh, if you apply uh, uh, to saturation. Saturation, yes. To apply to saturation, it is the same of an ethyl silicate. And the, the penetration is uh, the same for, for all the material because we are talking about an alcoholic and a water alcoholic solution with a, a low uh, evaporation rate of uh, in the consolidation um, product. And also very low, of course, very low viscosity and very low surface tension. Yes. So good penetration should be expected. Good penetration, yes. Yeah. But yes, of course. And then um, following on with the questions, um, what kind of microorganisms the soldier was applied to? And if it is possible to apply against both autotrophic and heterotrophic microbes founded in wall paintings? Okay, now I, I think uh, uh, this is a misunderstanding because uh, the, the, the treatment was made on uh, a clean surface. Yes, the, the, the micro, uh, uh, microorganism was already killed. The surface was cleaned and then we put the treatment to uh, reduce the re, re, reformation of this uh, of this uh, microorganism. We don't the, we don't uh, we don't make uh, we don't make uh, uh, the classification of the microorganism. Okay, we uh -huh. the bioluminometer. We are always we only sorry we only see the biological contamination with an, a value. It's a value that uh, can be uh, done by uh, lichens, uh, algae, and uh, other microorganisms. Well, we don't know the, the, the name of the, the microorganism. And does the soil gel require a specific range of temperature and RH to react as um, ethyl silicates? Yes, um, it's uh, like I said before, it's a, a liquid uh, and uh, uh, hydroalcoholic solution. So the temperature to use the soil gel is uh, from five, uh, five uh, uh, Celsius degree to uh, 30 uh, Celsius degree. Mm -hmm. There is not for, for the temperature. Uh, the, the, the application, uh, uh, I recommend not to apply with uh, sun, a direct sunlight, for example. And the difference we see from uh, summer to, to winter is a faster uh, is a faster evaporation of the of the solvent, nothing else. And in, for a 
humidity relative humidity no humidity does not uh, affect the affect the, the application yeah and um did you find that the best application process was spraying in most cases or does this vary across product and substrate um, in our activity 10 years activity i can say that uh, it uh, only is um, it's the same application it depends on the restaurants <laughs> and it depends on the complexity of the of the surface because there are surfaces like a plaster like a wall that can be treated very fast with the spray method uh other other surfaces that are more complex like the one in uh, uh the one in certosa uh, certosa di pavia i have uh, a little a little video that can explain it cannot find the video i think this is the video we cannot see the video <laughs> okay but think about think about this uh, think about this uh, complexity of uh, right. sorry this is think about this complexity this is the, the, the most effective treatment was made co combining spray to reach uh, uh, difficult uh, spaces and uh, uh, brush to modulate the absorption on to or to all the surface and this is the uh, hydrophobic effect of the of the silica so gel on the uh, rooting mortar in uh, terracotta um and then um I understand that the soil gel enable vapor, vapor porosity, so va water vapor or vapor transmission, but yeah. is permeable to water. In an extreme environment, wet environment, does this not cause a potential risk of trapped moisture? No, so if the moisture source is coming from, from the inside of the structure and you have a, you create an impermeable layer. So how is the moisture transfer? Uh, I think uh, it's it's the, the the opposite. It is in, impermeability. There is an impermeability to water, to liquid with okay. with water, and the permeability to vapor, uh, to vapor gas. To, to, to yes, vapor. but let's think of a system where you have a capillary rise. So you have water coming in from mm -hmm. the wall, and then you have your treatment ah, inside inside the wall. Okay. Yeah. We see there is, uh, uh, think about a wall uh, that is exposed to sunlight, okay? There is uh, the capillarity, the water um, that go uh, uh, up with capillarity and reach the surfaces. The soldier process, uh, ab is a a um, the water is able to evaporate through the porosity of the soil gel uh, mesoporosity. So it, it's not like a resin that can uh, that stop the, the, the also the vapor, but the uh, the surface is free to to dry to dry. Also, if there is humidity, uh, this water inside the the, the substrate. Mm -hmm. And then, um, in the case of in the case studies, did you evaluate the desorption or surface drying rate? or effect on condition in the case of ruins exposed to the weathering, whether building substrates absorb rainwater for various points. So I think this is this question is related to um, also the one above. Um, so how is the desorption on the surface um, or the drying rate um, when the ruins are exposed to weathering, when building, where all the building substrates are absorb rainwater from various points. So the two questions are related, but it's whether you have uh, evaluated this. Yes, the, the, if we if we treat a surface that is a, was then already it goes exposed to liquid moisture and how what is the rate of um 
of drying after this exposure to liquid moisture. So the if drying, uh, I, I asked the, the dry effect of the uh, soldier process or the dry effect of the of the water inside the, the, the dry effect of the water inside. Oh, no, we didn't measure this. Yes. OK. Would be interesting, certainly. Yeah, something that <laughs> this is something fun for us to to evaluate. This is uh, another research that we have to do. And then, um, do you anticipate any discoloration or breakdown over uh, a, a twenty-year um, span? Um, so, over a twenty-year period, what is the? Um, do you see any surface discoloration effects or? Mm -hmm breakdown of, of the surface so, we do like see this coloration effect if you have uh, a wet effect uh, soil gel solution that have to increase the the color the enhancing effect uh, we see uh, that in uh, five uh, five six years this effect go down but there is no discoloring of surface in case of uh, soil gel application on wall paintings uh, as a protective as a protective. Now we are testing also the uh, the soil gel uh, solution for a binder for, for pigments, uh, but we have uh, an application that the, the first application was made on a ceramic uh, in 2020 and it was presented on um, uh, on a workshop. Uh, in Mica, the, the International Museum of Ceramic in Faenza. And we have this case history uh, about, of about two, two years monitoring. Uh, we don't see uh, this coloring effect of the, uh, also in using Sojal as a retouching, but the, the research is at the beginning. Two, two years is uh, not enough for us. Yeah, 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 certainly. And uh, mm, have you tested on stone with freeze thaw action? Does it re resist freezing the treatment? Yes, we we made uh, uh, at the beginning uh, in uh, two, mm, 20, uh, 2012, uh, we made some consideration about it and we have uh, uh, measure uh, with uh, 30 cycles of uh, uh, freezing and unfreezing. Uh, some storm materials and uh, we see that uh, it resists to also in, the, in the very very cold condition and moving on does this uh there's a question i think i'm not sure whether it's about the consolidation or the um code like the, the impermeability treatment but is Sorry, I've got some works going on in the house, so it may become a bit noisy. <laughs> so, does this only work as a coating, um, a few micron, or does it penetrate further? It depends uh, on the surface. If you put it on the compact surface, uh, the soil gel tend to to form a, a layer from uh, some nanometers to some micro, microns. It depends on the concentration of the formulation. So gel is a process, but with this process, we can make some concentration, some uh, silica layer with different thickness, with different functionalization. Yes. So material can, it can be absorbed and uh, <laughs> you don't see any layer because uh, the, the, the absorption uh, make to make it to to coat only the the, 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 the wall of the poles. Yeah. So um, we do not have time. I think we are already over time. Ten minutes. So Michele, if you have to go, but um, I'm sure that Michele, you have in the presentation, you will also uh, have a recording of the presentation that is sent to everyone. So uh, if you want, I'm sure that if you want to email Michele directly with specific questions. Is that okay, Michele? And yes, one, one interest, so how do we purchase products to trial? Sorry? If it's possible to um, receive samples or purchase products. Yes, yes, we can, we, can, we can make it, yes. Yes, and then, um, 
yes, there's lots, lots more questions uh, that are popping up uh, that are if, here. If you, if you, if it is possible, uh, make the list uh, sent to me by email, and uh, uh, we provide an answer to to all the the, the questions as possible. <clears throat> as soon as possible <laughs> okay then i will um i can um i hope that i can i can make a note of all the questions and then i can either send them to you or if it would be probably easier if um the participants the attendees could email michele directly for more specific questions is that okay michele or is it <laughs> yes yes it is, <laughs> it is yeah. okay it is okay it's right it's my work. <laughs> I'm a technician. I have to 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 answer technical questions. Okay. Well, that's great. Thank you very very much, Michele, for the very very interesting talk today. And Thank you very much. Um,